Hello, it's Hal from Light again with another Monday Night Light video recap. We spent Monday evening just over an hour talking about image sizing using Photoshop and the image size dialog box. I want to try and recap that here relatively quickly. And remember, we're going to continue this discussion next Monday night from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Pacific. When we look at resizing an image, that's part of what I would consider our output workflow because we maintain a master file that is size independent. It, does, it doesn't matter. We have a native resolution coming from our camera. That's how many pixels wide by high our sensor is. And, and that, in effect, is the native resolution of our image. It has nothing to do with size. Size is much more of an output discussion. So let's take a look at the image size dialog by going up to the menu bar, image, image size, and see what this tells us about our document. Now the first thing I'd like you to do if you're following along with me is to make sure that resample image is unchecked. With resample image unchecked, all we have available is modifications to what, are called, what is called the document size. So what exactly does that mean, document size relative to the other portion of the display, pixel dimensions? Well, starting up at the very top, pixel dimensions is the native resolution of our image. It has nothing to do with size. It is also size independent, much like our master file. Here we see, coming off of a Canon 5D Mark II, we have a native resolution of just over 5,600 pixels wide by just over 3,700 pixels high. That is how many pixels are in our image. Pixel dimensions tells us nothing about the size of the document. Document size, however, tells us a lot. That is much more of an output value. We have a width, height, and resolution. When we switch the resolution from, say, for example, 180 here up to 300, notice that the document width and height in inches change as well. But what didn't change were our pixel dimensions. Native resolution does not change when we modify any of the three variables in document size because resample image is unchecked. All we're doing is figuring out how we want to divide up the pixels that are already in the image. What pixels are those? They're the ones that we find up here inside the pixel dimensions box. I could do this any of three ways down here in document size. I could ask for a specific resolution, say 180 pixels per inch, noticing that I then get a document of 31 by roughly 21. Why is that? Well, it just takes each of my width and height pixels and divides them by the resolution, knowing how many pixels it should try and lay out per inch. If we double this to 360, you'll see that we once again cut our document size in half in terms of its width and height measurement in inches. We could keep this going, and we could even have 70, pardon me, 720, and we get an even smaller document. When we use strictly the document size to size our image for output without resample image, we are using what I would consider the native resolution argument for image sizing. That is, we have captured a quality image, we've optimized it appropriately, and those pixels, if you will, are good. So we can try and reach our output size strictly by changing resolution or specific width and height to the document. For us at Light, we've done a lot of printing here. And regardless of, of what else might be out there, and let's just talk real quick about what else might be out there. You hear a lot of folks saying, well, I have to have 300 pixels per inch or somewhere between 240 and 360 is really required for photo quality. If I own an Epson printer, 360 pixels per inch. If I own a Canon, I might need 200 or 300. Perhaps you've even heard on the far end where if I own an Epson printer, you want 720 pixels per inch. Or on a Canon, you want 600 pixels per inch. We found here that in, in many cases, it, it just doesn't matter to the output quality as long as you start with a very good source file. And when we print a specific image, as we make that image larger, we also recognize that our viewing distance gets a little bit longer as we're further away from the image itself. So our workflow here at Light, when we first look to size an image, is to use native resolution. Our window here is anywhere from 180 pixels per inch, showing me exactly how big of a print I could make using native resolution. And on the high side, 
450 pixels per inch showing me how small I can make the print using native resolution. If I can't get to wherever I want to be using native resolution, then we need to recheck or we need to check the resample image box. So let's say what I wanted to have was an image that was 20 by 30. My workflow would be to open this uh, image. I'd come in here into the image size dialog and say, all right, 30 wide by 20 high gives me 187 pixels per inch. That will allow me to go with native resolution. If I changed this though and said, you know, I wanted to make this with 45, then I would see my resolution drop down to roughly 125 pixels per inch outside of the window. If I'm outside of the window, our next workflow step at light is to click resample image. When you click resample image, we get a drop down below it, as well as we could change our pixel dimensions, changing in effect our native resolution. We also have our three button or three text boxes available here in the document size. When we have resample image unchecked, Photoshop is going to use an algorithm, one of these five algorithms or mathematical processes to recreate our image. It looks at what the native resolution is and then examines what we have put into the image size dialog box and Photoshop will recreate the image as best it possibly can meeting those specific dimensions and pixel requirements. When we choose an algorithm, I like going with Adobe's recommendation. Bicubic smoother when I make things bigger, bicubic sharper when I make them smaller. So I will set bicubic smoother as best for enlargement. Before I change anything up here, I want to make sure that constrained proportions is checked. That way I maintain the aspect ratio. And if you happen to have an image with any kind of layer styles, you want to check scale styles. Once I have these three boxes checked and an algorithm selected, I note that my document size is exactly what I wanted before, and then I can set a specific resolution. I'm going to change this from roughly 125 to 180, the bottom of my acceptable print window. And when I say acceptable print window, that's acceptable for being a really good print, photograph quality, and I'd be willing to, to hang that any place or sell it, and people would be very happy with the print. When I went from 125 to 180, see that my native resolution jumped considerably. I was roughly at 5600 pixels wide, now I'm at 8100. What that pixel dimensions box is indicating to me is Photoshop is using the bicubic smoother algorithm and it's going to recreate the image with additional pixels. So if I needed this image at 45 by 30 with 180 pixels per inch, all I do here is click OK. If you wanted to take this and make it bigger, say you're going to follow the Epson recommendation of 360 pixels per inch, we see the native resolution jumped up considerably, as did our file size. Now our experience here at Light is anywhere from roughly 180 to 450 is going to give you an acceptable print. When you get up above 450, we have seen some slight issues with inkjet printers, both Epson and Canon. And also, file sizes can start to get quite large if you go much above 450 pixels per inch. So I want to cancel this out and show you my workflow one more time and I'll show you one for going big and one for going small. So this would be my master file. I would have opened it, saved it as something different for output, flattened if required, and now it's time to size before sharpening. So image, image size. We'll take this one and make it small. I start with resample unchecked and say that I'd like this to be a six by four. Noting the resolution is 936 pixels per inch. It's a little too high native resolution won't work, so I click resample image, by cubic sharper, which is best for reduction, and then I would change my resolution to the, my maximum of 450 and click OK. Let's do that same process going the opposite way. Go to image, image size, resample unchecked, so I'm looking to go native resolution, and I want here a 40 inch wide print. I get 40 by roughly 27. I see that my resolution is 140. It is outside of my window. Check resample to get out of the native resolution and go to our resizing algorithms. I'd like by cubic smoother, which is best for enlargement. And then I'll set my resolution 
I notice I skipped to scale styles. That's a mistake. I'm going to click that. Even though it doesn't matter with just this background image, I like to do it for habit patterns just in case. Once I have 180, my image width and height is going to be good to go when I click OK. So that is our basic resizing workflow. We're going to expand upon this a little bit more in the coming weeks. Please feel free to check us out at lightworkshops.blogspot.com. There will also be that, that same information is right here at the beginning of the video. So if you would come out and check into Monday Night Light, it's a pretty cool thing. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.